Hello, beautiful people. Here I am with the cosmic climate for the week of July 1st through the 7th. I don't know what it is about sage, but when I light it, I just, ugh, it's everything. And I don't really burn it that often, but when I'm in a vibe for it, I'm in a vibe for it. And I've been in a vibe <laughs> with sage for the past like two or three days. And it just, ugh. and I lit this as I was dropping into meditation and I feel that it has started to smoke even more. So like, it's just picked up the energy and I can hear the wind outside and it's just the element of air is so beautiful. I've been feeling that element of air so strongly. And speaking of air, we are in the end, at the very end of Gemini lunar cycle. And so just to recall what I was speaking about for the main theme, actually, let me put this up here. The main theme of uh, Gemini season is that we were being invited to make a really powerful, important decision. So that was definitely the feeling we were in the zone of that. And so I'm curious if that had resonated with you all for this lunar cycle. And also, um, did you, do you feel that you're in a place where you feel grounded and ready to make the choice or have you made it already? Like, where are you at with that? I feel for me, it's not that I necessarily had to make a decision. I think that I had already made decision, the decision and my journey was like owning the decision, being confident in my decision and so that I can move forward. So really quickly, as I've been saying for a couple months now, I am facilitating astro study group, a study group focused on, of course, astrology, astronomy, and I'm going to open that up to spiritual practice as well. And more specifically, integrating our life with the natural cycles and the flow of energy, so to speak, astrological energy just spiritual energy and all the things like really creating that integrated space. And so um, that's what I want to focus the study group on. And so the next meeting is going to be on July 21st. It's a Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern time. I really would love to have you there. So if you are interested, the link to sign up for the study group is in the description of this video. And so it's a good space and good container to kind of go deeper into what I discussed here, or if you have any questions about astrology, spirituality, or astronomy. So the second announcement is the dream live stream that I facilitate with my friend Alexis. We hold this live stream every Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern time. And this week we'll be talking about sex and dreams and what that means and you know maybe our experiences with that. So if you have questions or experiences with having sex in your dreams, we would definitely love to hear about it. So please join us this Wednesday, 9 p.m. Eastern time. All right, so that is done. Now back to the cosmic climate. All right. We have a lot of things happening this week. It is a very eventful week. We have Neptune beginning its retrograde cycle. We have Mercury moving into Leo, the moon reaching her waning crescent phase in Taurus, meaning that she will then soon after step into Gemini, which is the place in where this current cycle began. And so we're going to be bringing that to a close. And then we have the new moon in Cancer. So that'll be the beginning of Cancer's lunar cycle, which is going to be, in my opinion, in at least setting the tone for a really good lunar experience with Cancer energy. And I will also point out Mercury's opposition to Pluto retrograde. So Mercury being in Leo, opposing Pluto retrograde at one degree of Aquarius. And so... I feel like that's something to really note and something that's important. And as I mentioned, we are currently at the end of Gemini lunar cycle. So I invite you to actually do that reflection and see just June was such a busy, fast moving month 
The lunar cycle for Gemini began on June 6th, which is that, that new moon in Gemini. So between June 6th and basically this week, and if you want to be really down to the, the date, July 5th is when we'll have that new moon in Cancer. So between June um, June 6th and July 5th is a good time to reflect on just what that experience was like for you. Do you feel some sort of clarity within your decision making? Do you feel like if there were multiple things going on in your space, do you feel that you have um, pinpointed or received whatever that core uh, um connecting point was out of all of those things or what the underlying theme or main energy was for all the things going on for you in June and maybe even since the beginning of this year this is a really good time to reflect on that and as I mentioned for myself I didn't necessarily have to make a, a decision because I had already made it up in my mind I believe but my heart and my body needed to really feel confident in that in that decision and feeling safe and so personally that's where I am with that and so I would love to hear in the comments you know what you have have going on and where you feel where do you what do you feel with that and where you are with that so definitely feel free to leave that in the comment section below all right so let's see where to start let's start with the oracle so the oracles were pretty interesting, not what I was expecting, but once I sat and reflect on it for a couple of days, it, it definitely made sense. So the dominant energy for this week is sun and Pisces with vision. And I love, I love this card. It's very, you know, very simple and there's just so much focus ahead, right? We have the what feels to me like the third eye up top we have this lynx and we also have the sun just everything staring directly ahead and directly at us right and then there's a reflection in the water and i feel that i'm getting so many things from this energy i'm feeling that it's pointing to focus right of course there's so much there focusing in and it's the power of three that we have going on here then i also feel that with the links, it's giving me this feeling of a spirit guide watching you and here with you. I feel with the sun, that element of divine intelligence. And then we have the water here and the reflection and almost like the opposite point of the spectrum with that. So to me, that feels like the moon energy or lunar energy where it is a reflection point. So we have the divine intelligence and the divine intuition and that is there to really amplify this third eye energy, right? And what's really interesting and what comes to mind with this vision oracle is Neptune, Neptune's retrograde cycle. And I do feel the energy for this week is setting the tone for the Neptune, Neptune retrograde cycle. And <clears throat> Neptune will actually retro, this whole retrograde cycle is... Let's see. I believe it's I didn't I don't think I wrote down the in one second. I know I have it in here in this almanac. So Neptune's retrograde cycle is from naturally I feel that was just on this. Okay, here we go. Neptune retrograde July 2nd until December 7th. So that's a big chunk of time. And just a reminder, Saturn's also retrograde now. That began last week on June 29th, which was over the weekend. And uh, so Saturn's retrograde from June 29th to November 15th. So now we're really in the space of like slowing down, refining and kind of doing the work, throwing off the karma, throwing off resistance and just anything keeping us emotion emotionally attached to false senses of security and you know false realities and such and speaking of false realities with neptune neptune especially when it retrogrades and especially at this point where there is that transition so it's holding its power at 29 degrees of pisces and so we're so close for it to Neptune moving into Aries, but it's like, mm, no, before we really cross over into a new 
realm and a new archetype and energy that we're going to be dissolving, you know, layers of consciousness and, and, you know, shifting our perspective on things, we are needing to slow down, refine, and really just reflect on the past, what, 14 years, I believe. So Neptune, this Neptune cycle that began um, in Pisces began on April 2011. So that was the first time Pisces or Neptune moved into Pisces. And then with retrograde cycles, it kind of dipped back into um what would that be? Uh, Aquarius, right? So it dipped back into Aquarius two more times. And then finally, uh, February 2012 was its third time in Pisces. And then it began to really move forward, right? And fully in that energy. And so if we think back to 2011, that's when this entire Neptune cycle in Pisces began. And I just had some realization just now thinking about what was I doing in, in 2011? That's when I moved to Boulder, Colorado and began that whole experience. And with Neptune, Neptune's intention or virtue essentially is to ultimately bring us into deeper union with the divine, with um, source energy, so to speak. And so the way in which Neptune you know, achieves that, that goal or that intention is by dissolving our like layers within our consciousness to really um, break down our belief systems and to challenge us through that process of disillusion. It allows us to expand our consciousness and with Neptune, there sometimes can be this experience of like a very metaphysical experience or just with that breaking down um, of our consciousness or of our reality, there's like this spiritual, uh, what's the right word? Like, I guess you could say spiritual awakening. So it's like a series of spiritual awakening through the process of disillusion. So with Neptune and Pisces, that's like, you know, in modern astrology, Neptune is the, the planetary ruler of Pisces in the way as I use, you know, traditional astrology more so. So I focus in on the um, person, what we would call like the personal planets. Uh, I do feel that Neptune and Pisces, they have an affinity to one another. They have very similar energies. And so Neptune has had a really kind of almost like easy time for the most part in in Pisces being able to really actualize and realize that intention of connecting us deeper with spirit. And Neptune or in Pisces is like the the space or the archetype that really you know, it's like, what boundaries? Like everything is one, let's all come together. Let's all blend together. Let's merge. Let's just feel all the, it's all about the feeling and the senses and the energy. And at the core of that, Pisces archetype is here to help us learn compassion and empathy and really utilize our intuition and other clairvoyant abilities to connect deeper with not only each other, not only ourselves, but with the world around us. And so with Neptune retrograde and right at this, this boundary even of Pisces 29 degrees, we are being guided to reflect before we can ultimately move forward in 2025. So Neptune will move into Aries, March 30th of 2025. We're gonna have experience where, um, retro Neptune retrograde next year will move back into Pisces. So, you know, this first retrograde or last retrograde with it fully in Pisces, we will really get a clear understanding of like, okay, I am still, you know, moving through this, navigating through this, and I am wanting to change my beliefs ultimately in perspective on that. And I feel once Neptune moves into Aries, that focus is going to shift to really 
fully being present and in the moment with this new like divine perception as well as like the connection to spirit like we're deepening our connection to spirit in a way that we haven't ever done it before individually and collectively and so there's going to take a lot of courage and boldness and it's going to feel like we are pioneers in this new reality that we are creating for ourselves and for our communities. And so right now we are in this experience of going back and reflecting and refining and getting clear and really, again, coming back to the perspective of really, it's it's not too good to be true. If you feel it's too good to be true, there's something there where you're like, oh, that would be so amazing, but that's, no, that can't be it actually can. And this is what we're going to really uncover for ourselves. And we're being guided to embody so that we can start to charge for and utilize that Aries energy of being present in the, in the moment and acting with an inspiration so that we can really draw down and anchor in this new reality for ourselves. And so with this vision card, I really feel this energy of Neptune retrograde and it's all it's like what is your vision what do you perceive because what you perceive you receive right and our reality is a result of our perceptions and our belief systems and so we really want to take this time to connect with divine and our spirit guides are here right and so really trust and in, in, trust in that right having faith that your vision is true and what you really might feel that is too good to be true. I can never do that thing or I can never receive that or have this kind of lifestyle. Actually, they're here to, and I'm here to say, yes, you can. So that is what I'm feeling with this Oracle and, and Neptune retrograde. And so <clears throat> the next two Oracles we have are Jupiter and Scorpio with manipulation. We've seen this card a few times, actually. And then we have Venus in Virgo with discrimination. And whenever I see this with this Venus in Virgo card, I just, I connect so deeply with it. I think because of, you know, the butterflies, the rolling hills, just the flowers, everything. It feels really good. She's barefoot on the ground, bare feet on the ground. And with this, so I feel this is kind of an indication of that Neptune retrograde as well when it comes to, you know, the disillusion process, um, you know, depending on where you are vibrationally, and we're always kind of, you know, we don't, our, our vibrational frequency changes, and it could be really high at points, it can be lower at points. And so, you know, sometimes you might resonate or be in, exp in an experience or an environment where the reality is really harsh, really negative, And that's essentially if it doesn't feel good, like there is a, a potential for the energy around to be manipulated, things to be really confusing and hazing. That is also a process of disillusion, um, disillusionment as it's like, where am I? I feel disoriented because I, you know, things are breaking down, layers of our consciousness are being exposed. And it makes me think about certain mental illnesses where for instance, I think it's uh, schizophrenia where there's levels or, I, and excuse, excuse me, I'm not like a neurologist or a psychiatrist or anything, so I might butcher this, but I feel like you guys can pick up where I'm going with this. But basically they are there are parts of the consciousness or the brain that are exposed, like more of in a spiritual sense or just the heightened awareness of say, you know, multiple aspects of self or if you're saying like you're seeing spirits or just that process of hallucination, if you are not in a space mentally where you are also grounded, like you don't have that balance again with that reflection point, if you don't have that balance, it could really disorient you in a sense of where you almost feel crazy and like you're losing your mind, right? And so as we are transitioning, as we are reflecting and refining, we might have those moments where either we we feel like we're Delulu and there could be, you know, a benefit to that or a positive experience with like, you know, like I said, oh, this is too good to be true. But that feeling when it's exciting and it feels right, 
that's a good feeling. And we want to kind of feed into that more. But if you're in a space where, you know, just a perfect example, if you're here in the US and you're hearing the political debates and like politics is going to be a really big thing right now. And so just tapping into that reality and that manipulation of, you know, just the feeling of oppression and just like feeling disempowered, that is an illusion, right? And that is not the truth, right? That is, does not, um, you know, these systems that have been created, you, you're not, you are empowered. You can take your power back. You can, you know, um, you are in charge of your own personal power and you can act, you know, as such, right? And so this is what I'm feeling with this manipulation card. It's also kind of an indication of B, an awareness of the energy, right? And also utilize your intuition and connect with your spirit guides during this time, because that will help you to see clearly, especially with the discrimination, right? And so being able to have that ability and that discernment to really um, cut through all the haziness, all the BS, all the manipulative energy, right? Because there's going to be a lot of that. And Let's see. Um, so here, what I wrote for the or for the Oracle of the Week, what came forth is that the underlying theme of all three oracles, and this is why I want to come to my notes, because there's something else that I picked up on. And this was actually reading the interpretation of the book that it actually points to being of service, right? And utilizing your intuition and clairvoyant abilities with good intention to know exactly what will be essential and supportive, not only for those that you're being in service of, but of course, for you. And with this card, the vision, it spoke about um, your vision and being able to see clearly or utilizing, I believe, your intuition, your third eye. I mean, that's how I picked up on that. So it may or may not say that in the book. With discrimination, this also was talking about being of service and being able to discern what is in alignment, essentially. And of course, this is an easy one with Jupiter and Scorpio. It's basically, um, this is utilizing the ability to really penetrate through energy and information. And like when you, with that Scorpio energy of, passion and the drive and really going deep and the investigative um, type of um, quality of Scorpio, really utilizing that to go deep with your passions and your creative endeavor. And so with these subtle energies, allow them to inform you on how to create a nurturing space for life to blossom. And so this nurturing space that I'm speaking of is a part of the theme of cancer Cancer's lunar cycle, um, the moon's lunar cycle in Cancer, right? As the new moon is on July 5th, 6.57 p.m. Eastern time. So the, the main theme I'm getting here is that we are creating space for life to blossom, for our intentions to blossom. So we want to really have a strong and supportive like home base for the soul's ever evolution. And why I'm speaking of soul's evolution is because during the new moon, we are actually going to, the moon is going to be squaring the nodes, right? So the lunar nodes are in Aries and Libra, south node in Libra, north node in Aries. And, and now as I'm thinking about it, that north node is, I'm feeling this, um, not necessarily foreshadow, but just I'm feeling this connection and seeing where the energy is evolving as <clears throat> Neptune will soon, like I said, move into Aries and that energy that comes with that um, that transition. And I already see our souls um, evolving towards that archetype and starting to take in the qualities of boldness and being present in the moment and taking a leap of faith, trusting in your spirit guides, tr trusting in your intuition and such. So that's really important. And with the South Node in Libra, we are essentially letting go of the extremes, letting go of, you know, uh, relationships in our lives that don't align with where we are um, desiring to go in the world that we're creating for ourselves. We're also, um, yeah, you're just, there's this focus on balance. And in order to balance, we have to let go and clear. So we're finding the peace within where we are now. And that peace will help us to trust and, and step into the, um, the, the new territory, so to speak. 
And so I like that for this lunar cycle, the moon, it begins with it squaring these, the lunar nodes. And if you ever learn evolutionary astrology, the square with the nodes is considered, if any planet squares the nodes, it's considered to um, be what they called a skip step, I believe. And I, I did study evolutionary astrology a long time ago. <laughs> um, but basically it's like the planet that you, that is, squaring the nodes essentially is kind of the key to how your soul is evolving at the time. Now, if this isn't a birth chart, this is just kind of a part of your blueprint, a part of your journey. But as I'm looking at this in transit, I really feel this connection for this lunar cycle specifically, especially because we're going to have a, a new moon and a new moon solar eclipse in Libra. So I think this is, this is going to be kind of a part of that in a way especially with Venus in Cancer at this time. Nonetheless, with um, the moon as kind of that that kind of key factor in how we are going to um, in, like navigate this energy and evolution of the Libra and Aries parts of our chart and ourselves, the moon is key to that. And what I'm getting with this lunar cycle essentially is the ability to create a space, as I mentioned, for life to blossom, not only now, but moving forward. So being able to create a space where you feel safe and secure within yourself, right? And so something that also can be um, with you, something that can help you feel safe within yourself. So it could literally start out as a crystal. One of the things that I am desiring to do, and it's been on my mind for a while, I just haven't I'm very picky about it. Um, I do want to start wearing black tourmaline. So I was wearing clear quartz for a while. And then I transitioned to, um, what was I just wearing? Oh yeah, it was my clear quartz pendant. And you guys would see that and it was done. It wanted to rest. And speaking of letting go, because I would also... Like I would sleep with it and the necklace would somehow come undone while I was sleeping. The only time I really took it off was to take a shower. And then, so I would get out of the shower and then I realized after a couple hours, I didn't put it on, which is not like me. I'd get out and I put it on right away. And eventually I like went for a walk and then I realized I got home and it'd been like an hour or so. And I was like, it was just a chain the quartz dropped outside and it was a big, beautiful quartz that I had programmed to kind of clear my chakras ongoing essentially. And I think I was wearing it for like a year and yeah. And it was like, now, now it was reclaimed by earth. And I'm sure someone walked, um, came across it and was really excited. Cause I left it or it, I know, um, where I dropped, it was probably at a nature park that I went to that day. So I'm like, oh, that's going to be really exciting for someone to find like this really big quartz crystal is so pretty. And so anyways, so now I know my next stone is black tourmaline. And there's so many reasons why I am going to be wearing that now, but this fits right into that creating space. And first I'm focusing on my body so you can fo focus on detox and cleansing and clearing, especially if you're a cancer rising Um you know, just cleansing your vessel and doing something of that nature. But I, I feel like you all get what I'm saying, right? So that's going to be a bit of the focus for lunar cycle. Um, the sun and Venus are there with the new moon as well. And so uh, I feel like that's going to be nice coming home. And Venus, I feel like Venus is a really good guest for um, the moon uh, for Cancer's home. So I think that would be good. Um, a good vibe to have there. And let's see, vibration of the sun, just checking my notes. Yeah, I feel I feel pretty good with that. Okay, so one last thing I want to hit on is Mercury and Leo. We spoke a bit about that last week with the Oracle about bold communications, speaking your truth. And so with this particular Mercury and Leo, and I believe Mercury is actually going to retrograde back into Leo here in a little bit. Let's see. Um, Mercury. Yeah. So yeah. So Mercury will begin its retrograde cycle on August 5th. So this is looking ahead a little bit, but then it's going to, um, 
go direct in Leo at 21 degrees of Leo. So yeah, it's going to move into, um, Mercury is going to back into Leo at some point. So beginning July 16th is when Mercury retrogrades shadow begins, <clears throat> which will be in Leo. And so, yeah, we want to have, we are just going to, I'll point that out here in the next cosmic climate, but, you know, kind of pay attention to this Leo part of your chart as we are going to be refining some elements of um, that Leo part of our chart as far as communications, thoughts, ideas, energy exchange and such, um, speaking your truth, speaking up for yourself. I, I feel like that's definitely a big thing with the with Mercury retrograde in the fire signs this year. That's going to be really, really important. And... Yeah, I'll touch more on that then. And so, you know what? It's really interesting too. Just finally want to add that Mercury will oppose Pluto retrograde in Aquarius at one degree, right? And so even though Mercury's not going to retrograde at this particular point in Leo, early in Leo, it's going to be in the last, what, 10 degrees or essentially nine degrees of Leo. So the, the third decan of Leo is where Mercury is going to have like, have a retrograde cycle in. And so I, I think it's still important to point out this Mercury opposition to Pluto retrograde, because I feel that with Pluto, right? Pluto is exposing elements of our unconscious, our shadows, our fears, our traumas, also that connection to the unseen hidden energy that could be very beneficial and helpful. I'm curious if that's something we'll experience on July 3rd, or really any time this week and moving as we move, you know, into further into Leo, we might receive some sort of, you know, divine insight about this Leo part of our chart. For me, it's about career and public rec recognition, visibility, and the 10th house, basically. So look at what Leo rules for you. And that'll give you some understanding of where that um, refinement is going to um, be experienced, especially if you have you know, any placements, any planets or anything in Leo, that will be really important for you at this time. And so I think I feel pretty good with this. Uh, you know, I can talk and talk and talk these days, but I will spare all of you. And, you know, anything I'll add, I'll add along the way. So thank you so much for watching my video. And also, I don't know if you all saw, but I had just posted yesterday, um, Sunday, June, June 30th, I posted a video where I talk about my offerings, the different readings I offer, the mentorship that I offer. And yeah, because some people, I guess, you know, they didn't know that I I do readings. It, maybe that's on Instagram, but I'm sharing pretty much here and Instagram and everywhere I can what um, I offer to you guys, how I'm to be of service right now. And of course I, I go through the readings, but just wanting to add that the study group is an offering and I do events here and there, the dream live stream. I'm gonna be doing another dream circle this fall. And so, yeah, just um, join my email list if you wanna stay in touch and find out about these offerings. And I will be offering discounts as well. So I will share that when, when those times arise. So thank you so much, everyone, for your support. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please like the video. Please share it with a friend. Please subscribe if you're enjoying my content and haven't subscribed yet and share your comments and experiences in the comments below. Thank you again so much. I hope you have a beautiful week. I hope you have a happy new moon in Cancer and we will talk again soon.